doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor. Hi everyone, Amy Hepburn. Uh, I'm the CEO of the Investor Leadership Network. Super happy to be on this panel with so many change makers. And Hubert, thank you to you. He has been an incredible uh, change maker in this space. You've been convening mm -hmm. so, as long as I've been in my role uh, as leading ILN. Uh, Hubert's been ringing the bell on this topic and bringing the right people around the table. So thank you and thanks to SMI, our good friends at SMI. We, we love collaborating with you at ILN. So those of you that may or may not know ILN, we were formed during the 2018 G7 uh, as a, a collaborative on, on how to support um, movement towards a more sustainable and inclusive society. We currently are 14 members. Uh, representing over 10 trillion assets under management uh, across G7, I say G7 plus now because we're also in Australia, um, that are really focused on driving impactful, tangible, trackable impact in three areas, and that is climate, uh, diversity, advancing diversity in, uh, in the financial marketplace, and the third is private capital mobilization in emerging markets. Uh, and so, you know, this work we're doing here today really, you know, cross cuts uh, all of these themes. Um, I mean, maybe what I would add uh, just to kind of frame the conversation from an ILN perspective is about three years ago, almost four, we partnered with the Rockefeller Foundation with a very specific question. And they said, help us understand why you're, what would unlock your members' capital in emerging markets. Help us really understand. It's you know, it's a collection of 14 members. It's not a huge group, but they're powerful and they're large. And a core are the Maple Eight, the Canadian pensions. What keeps their capital on the sidelines? That research culminated in a paper, which then has continued and, and shaped our work over the last three years, and even in a call to action, which Hubert helped us put together for, for COP last year uh, with other uh, industry associations um, in, the, in the marketplace, really looking at what our call to action is. And I would say the work really falls in three buckets. What's keeping the, you know, what are the solves for unlocking this capital? One is project pipeline, scalability. The second is better de-risking mechanisms. So really looking at concessional capital, what are the options there? And the third is on data, which those of you that were in the session earlier this morning, we talked a lot about GEMS and the importance of, of uh, better data to allow us to price risk. So we're sort of up against this actual versus perceived risk conundrum um, in this space. So we've been doing a lot in that. I'm sure I'll talk about that a little bit later. But, um, but again, you know, I think this maybe I'll end by saying I think the path forward that is both my, my proof of concept within our work at ILN is that it is a path forward that is cross-sectoral and very collaborative. Um, and that is where we're seeing our most success. Doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor.